Okay, so today, guys, is the last lecture for this year. How cool is that? Um, someone's asked about the marks. So I said that the marks will be released um, either on Monday afternoon or more possibly Tuesday morning. And that's just because it's uh, there's a lot of processes for us to go through before we can finalize the marks. Um, such as remarks and that sort of stuff. So, so that's that's the plan. Okay. So the last lecture, this last lecture is going to be on forex. We are going to be doing, um, we're actually going to be doing a class example. So it's class example three, uh, and 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 we want to try and look out for and focus on the FEC, right? So so the hedge accounting. Is the, is is the reason why we are here today. So I'm just going to show you now. We're going to read through the questions. So I want you to zoom in on this page on your side, and I'll do on my side, and then we'll read through the question together, and then we'll start to address the issues. Right. So um, the required. So let's start at the required at the top of the page. It says prepare all relevant journal entries for transaction one and two. So they want you to prepare for both transactions. Right. Um, in the general journal of Meaty Limited, sorry for the vegans in the classroom, um, for Meaty Limited from 30th June 20, uh, 2006 to 30th September 2006, um, your answer must comply with the international financial with IFRS, right? Um, and then it's, it tells us that um, our journals must be dated correctly. They must there's no uh, narrations re required. Our final, you'll see in our tests and exams, I will say here, the final mark must be rounded off to the nearest land. Because I don't want you to round in between your calculations, because I'm scared you're going to get to an amount that's just way off the amount that the marker is going to be looking at. So I want you to only round off the final mark, the final answer. Right, so your final amount must be round up to the nearest rand, and then I, and then it says here, yeah, show all calculations, cross referencing, and ignore tax. Okay, cool. So there's nothing uh, uh, too much that we need to worry about. The only thing that I would sort of um, care about is these dates, right? So I don't know what those dates represent. Are they year end? Are they transaction dates yet? Right? We don't know what they represent. So. I'd like to just sort of find that would be like my only question that I'd have in my mind. Like, what are these dates all about? Right. Um, OK, cool. So let's go to information. Right. So I'm reading at information and then it says Meaty Limited, uh, a South African company sells game and beef products. Meaty Limited entered into the following Forex transactions. OK, so transaction one. OK. It says, on 25th April 26, uh, 2006, Springbuck Limited, a Singaporean company, placed an order with Meaty Limited for game and beef products to the value of 5,000 Singaporean dollars. Okay. Um, it then says that the products were shipped, cost insurance freight, from South Africa on the 15th of August, uh, and they arrived in Singapore on the 25th of August. Meaty Limited uh, invoiced Springbuck Limited uh, in Singaporean dollars for this order. And then it tells us about how uh, Springbuck Limited plans to pay Meaty Limited, and they plan to pay on the 30th of November uh, half, and then the other half on the 28th of February the following year. Now, what's important is if we have a look at our dates that we're preparing for, right? So we're preparing from June to September, if you look at the top, uh, the required, right? Um, so, so, so here, we need to now ask ourselves, what does our timeline look like? So first question, right? Is this, a, so get ready in, your, in, in the chat box, because you guys are going to answer me in the chat box now. So is this a debtor or a creditor? Is this a debtor or a creditor? Right. So it it that's correct, yes. So it's a debtor, right? Which means sort of the rules that we talk about um, 
for example, when a rate gets bigger, normally I, uh, I would ask you guys in class, oh, the rate's gotten bigger. What does that mean? And then you guys would reply, loss, right? So here, if, for example, let's say we're dealing with the direct rate. In fact, we are, but I'm just, let's just uh, assume that we didn't see that in the next part of the question. But if we're dealing, let's say, with a direct rate and the rate gets bigger, it's not going to be a loss anymore because now the, the question that you're going to be asking yourself is, uh, here we've got a debtor. The debtor is getting bigger. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? And obviously it's a good thing because the debtor is an asset. And so therefore, right, now we're going to have, uh, instead of a loss, we're going to have a gain. Right? So just keep that in mind that it's a debtor that we're dealing with. Next question, get ready again in the chat for me. Next question, what is the transaction date? Right, so we've got three dates here. We've got the date that it was ordered on the 25th of September, uh, 25th of April, 2016. We've then got the date it was shipped, cost insurance freight, on the 15th of August. Right, and then we've got the last date, the date it arrived in Singapore on the 25th of August. Right, so that's what people are saying. If you have a look at the chat there, people are saying 15th of August because what word are we looking for? Remember, we said it in class. We're looking for that word shipped, right? That's it, correct. We're looking for that word shipped. And so the, the day on which it was shipped. Now, regard, notice what's happened here, guys, right? You guys are used to seeing FOB, right? Fee on board, right? Now, with cost insurance freight, we're still using the date it was shipped. Because remember, I told you when I first introduced those two topics to you, I said there's FOB and there's CIF, right? Uh, but for back to 100 purposes, we're going to assume that it's going to be the same time, right? We're, going to, we're, we're not going to differentiate between the two. So when we see the word shipped, regardless of whether it's FOB uh, or, or, or CIF, that date that it is shipped on is our transaction date, right? Everyone's got that. That date that it was shipped on, regardless of FOB or CIF. So that's the date that we're going to use. Um, okay, so now let's just briefly, before we move on to, on, on to transaction two, I want to start with our timeline, right? I want to start with our timeline. So we told that we need to start recording on the 30th of June, 2016. That's what our required says at the top, right? 30th of June, uh, 2006 at least, not 2016. So if we have a look here, so the order was placed on, on 25 April. Nothing happens until the 15th of August. So our first transaction is going to be on the 15th of August, right? So it's going to be on the 15th of the eighth month. That's when our first transaction, that's the transaction date, right? The transaction TD, transaction date. That's the first transaction. Then, right, we're going to continue on until the 30th of September. So there seems that we need to fi figure out what is the 30th of September. We don't know yet, but we're going to find out just now as we read that it's going to be the year end, right? So, so we're going to record only for this period, right? We're going to record only for this short period of time. There's no other journal entries that we need to pass. So we don't need to pass journal entries for the settlement. We don't, that's not what it's being asked. So let's not waste time doing that because we could actually be using that time on another question, right? On another more tricky question or on a, on a question maybe that we, that we can score more marks on. So we must be very careful just to only pass the journal entries that we've been asked to pass, okay? So, so that's the first point. Okay, so now let's read uh, transaction two. So if you guys follow with me, I'm going to start reading there at transaction two. Um, so then we, we, we're told now, it says, uh, on 30th June 2006, Miti Limited borrowed 60,000 Singaporean pounds from Uven Bank in Singapore. The interest on the loan is repayable annually in arrears. What does that statement tell us? It tells us that we have to create that additional creditor, right? That and that th those words annually in arrears, you're going to see it in your questions, in your tests and exams. Annually in arrears tells us that we need to create uh, that, that additional creditor, which we sometimes call interest payable, accrued interest, um, 
interest accrued. You know, there's different versions, but it's the same thing, right? So, so it's that additional creditor that we need to create. And it says it's 10% per annum. So if it's per annum, and if we're only preparing for part of the year, we need to remember that we must prorate, okay? Um, so, so because it's a per annum rate, okay? So it says, so I'm continuing uh, reading, I'm starting at the word with. So it says, with the first interest payment being due on the 30th of June, 20, 2007, and the um, capital portion of the loan is repayable in four equal half yearly installments in Singaporean dollars from 31st December 2006. Right, from 31st December. So just as a as 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 a way of uh, interest or as a point of interest, what is the installment amount here? What is the installment amount? You guys are going to type that out for me in the chat. What is the installment amount? All right. What what amount are we looking for? Fifteen thousand Singaporean dollars. All right. How did we get to that amount? How did we get to 15,000 Singaporean dollars? We took 60,000 Singaporean dollars divided by four, right? That's it, yeah, divided by four. And that gives us um, uh, 15,000. Now we're paying that, right? We're paying those payments twice in a year. So we're paying it after six months, right? So from June to December, that's the first payment after six months. And then another payment uh, next year, June. Right? And over this time, we're going to accumulate interest, and we're only paying the interest once. Okay, So we're making two payments on the capital, but one payment on the interest. Right, So that's what we've been told. Okay, so let's. I'm going to continue reading. Uh, I'm starting with the word on. Uh, and it says, on 1 September 2006, Michi Limited took out a... FEC forward exchange contract. So this is the important bit, right? Uh, to the value of the capital portion of the first installment on the foreign loan. So they took out a FEC for the value of 15,000 Singaporean dollars, right? And it expires on the 31st of December 2006. So it expires on the date that we need to make the payment, right? It expires on the date that we need to make the payment. Okay. Right. So now we're told, in additional information, we're told that the year end is uh, um, 30 September. We're told that Meaty Limited uses the RAND as its functional and presentation currency and that the entity does not use control accounts. Uh, on the next page, sorry, you guys are going to have to zoom in again. On the next page, it says the in, uh, the entity uses the periodic inventory system. It gives us the different rates, but I've, I've sort of reproduced the rates for us in the slides. Just now we're going to look at it. Uh, it also gives us the average rate, right? Now remember the average rate is the thing that we use to raise the interest expense, only the interest expense. So I'm not going to write the whole word out, but interest expense, i.e. only the interest expense needs to be at the average rate. Right, not the credit, not the interest accrued. We're going to talk about that just now. It says the company chose to apply hedge accounting, um, and that the FEC is the hedging instrument, and that the loan is the hedged item. It tells us that um, that all of the hedging criteria have been met, um, and so and so. These three statements are those statements that we see in all of our questions. Right, those last three statements are the question are the statements that we're going to see in all of our questions. Right. Any questions so far about the uh, question? Anything that you may uh, anything that you don't understand, please just pop it in the chat for me. Right. So now we're going to start to look. Oh wait, we didn't do a timeline for the second one. Let us just. Uh, sorry guys, you're going to have to just zoom in again. I'm going to start to do a timeline. So we told now in. Um, in this example, we told that we need to start on the 30th of June, right? That's what they asked us to do, right? So that's going to be 
30 of 6 or 30 slash 6, and that's going to be our transaction date, right? So what happens on that date again? We get the money from the bank. So the bank gives us the money. So we need to record that money entering our bank, right? And then we're going to have a period of time that's going to go past. There's not going to be any... Uh, payment that's going to happen, right? Because remember the payments are in December and then in June next year for the interest. So we're not going to have any payments, but we're going to have to revalue at the end of the year. So we're going to have uh, this thing um, that we're going to call year end, right? And that's going to be 30th of the ninth month or September, right? End of September. But in the middle of all of this, we're going to take out the APC, right? And you guys, uh, we're going to talk about what happens on that date, right? So we're going to take out the APC, and that's on the first of the ninth month. Okay, so that's our timeline. Um, there's nothing else that we've missed on the timeline, right? Yeah, I think that's the timeline. Okay. Let me just... Go back to the slides and then we can we can talk about it further okay so we're going to start off with transaction one let's just do transaction one for now right so in transaction one there is no fec right so that's how i've put a cross there because we're not going to be looking at an fec for transaction one because the fec only comes in to transaction two right and then with transaction one remember we're dealing with a debtor Okay, we're dealing with the debtor. Right. So on transaction one, you guys correctly said that the transaction date for transaction one is uh, 15th of uh, August 2006. Right. So what's going to happen on this date is we're going to sell, we're going to record it in revenue as sold. Right. So remember when you guys did revenue, you learned that you must credit revenue when it increases, right? So we're going to credit either revenue or sales, right? And then we're going to debit uh, the debtor because the debtor is increasing, okay? And we're going to use a rate of five rand per Singaporean dollar. Remember, this is a, a, a direct rate, okay? Because the foreign currency is in a single unit. So in the heading, you can see the foreign currency there as being SGD, Singaporean dollars is in one is in a single unit. If we look at our question in our test to exam and we see the rand is in the single unit, so 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 rand we've got rand one and then equals and we've got some sort of um, foreign currency, then we know that it's an indirect method, right? And we must divide. This is a direct method and therefore we multiply. Okay, so so. Um, so let's let's try and make that first recording on on transaction date, right? So like I said, we're going to debit the debtor and we're crediting sales or revenue. And look at our calculation here. We take fifty thousand Singaporean dollars multiplied by five rand, okay? And that's going to give us uh, um, our answer, okay? Now, if we remember our timeline, we're only doing transaction date. And then we're doing year end date. There's nothing else that we're doing for this specific transaction, right? For this transaction one. So let's go back to our timeline, uh, back to our rates. Right? So we started off at five rand. Now get ready because I'm going to ask you a question and you guys probably know what the question is. Um, so we're moving from five rand to four rand 76. Okay, we're moving from 5 Rand to 4 Rand 76. So the question is, that's it. <laughs> you guys know me so well already. So is it, a, is it a gain or a loss? It's a loss. Why? Let's, let's do the rationale together. It's, it's because the um, debtor, yeah, it's, uh, you guys caught me out. It's because the data is getting smaller. When the data gets smaller, it is a bad thing, and therefore it is a loss. Okay, so I want you to, I'm like, I do this every time with every transaction because we, we want it to sink into our minds so that when we get 
the question in our TESA exams, we're not like lost, right? We, we understand what's happening. Uh, you can at least score a few marks. <laughs> That's the only question that should be asked in the exam. Okay, so so we're gonna we're gonna record this difference, and just you guys will will be able to calculate it. But it's 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 twenty four cents, right? So there's a difference of twenty four cents. We're gonna multiply it by the fifty thousand Singaporean dollars. So let's have a look at now. Again, I've said this many many times before. This method of calculating can only be done if you've got a direct rate not if you've got an indirect rate okay uh so anyway we take we take the the um rem so they've actually used my method where they've taken the the new rate and put it down here and then the old rate uh, comes in there and because it's a minus because there's a, a product is a, is a negative and it's a, a um, we're dealing with a debtor right therefore we have a loss of 12,000 rand okay so that is transaction one can everyone see the transaction one is actually um, a creditor in reverse right that's what it is it's a creditor in reverse okay so so transaction one is just a creditor in reverse right so let's talk about, so that's transaction one. Let's move on to transaction two now. Transaction two is the one where we're going to start to use the forward rates, right? So transaction two has the APC. Okay. Transaction two has the APC. Okay. So we are recording. Remember what our question said? We want to be able to record, or it's asked us to record from the 30th of June all the way to the 30th of September. We're not recording anything else, right? We're just doing those um, um, transactions. So let's start with the first day, right? So the transaction date, right? Which it wasn't too complicated in the question, but uh, on the 30th of June, 2006, was our transaction date for this loan. So what are we going to record on this date? We want to see the money from the loan coming into the bank. So we know we need to debit bank, right? Because bank must increase, right? So, so we're going to have a debit bank, and then we have to credit that liability, that loan. So we're recognizing the loan and saying, hey, we owe this bank some money, right? Um, so we're going to take our 20,000, uh, sorry, 60,000 uh, Singaporean dollars, right? And we're going to multiply it by the spot rate of four rand, okay? So that's the first transaction that we want to pass. We want to pass the transaction of, of recognizing the loan. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So we take the 60,000 multiplied by four rand, and notice how we've debited bank, saying that bank is increased, and we credited the loan. We're recognizing that we owe this person, right? And, uh, and obviously, the product of this calculation at the bottom is 240,000. Uh, rent. Okay, that one was simple. Now let's go back. Okay. So next question, what are we going to record? Uh, or you guys are going to tell me, is there a journal entry that we need to record for the FEC? The day on the date that we took the FEC out. So we took it out on what date? First September. So are we recording any journal entries? The question is, are we recording any journal entries on this date? And your answers in the chat, as you can see there, are no. There's no journal entries that we are needing to record on this first date, right? And again, I'm going to take you through. I know that most of the people that answered, they, they, they know exactly what I'm going to say next, right? But, but just the rationale behind why we're not recording any journal entries is because on the date that we took out the FEC, we paid a specific amount. So therefore, the cost is um, a specific cost. So, so in our example here, the cost is is uh, four and seventeen, right? So we paid. We're going to pay four and seventeen. That's the amount that we took out. But the fair value, right, of a same of the same FEC with the same amount expiring on the same date is going to be the same four and seventeen. 
So the fair value is equal to the cost. Therefore, there's no difference that we need to account for or record. Okay, that's why there's no journal entry on the first day. Okay, cool. So, uh, so now we're going to move along our timeline, and we're going to come to year end. Now, this is the last date that we're going to be recording, right? So, year end date is the last date. Um, so, if we have a look at year end, what things do we need to take care of, and what stuff do we need to uh, need to remember with the loan at year end, right? So, I'm only looking at the loan. We're not. We we'll leave the FEC now for a few minutes. We're going to return to the FEC just now, guys. So let's just only look at the loan. What do we need to What do we need to to make sure that we take care of, right? So the first um, the, the the first thing <laughs> people are already answering, but the first thing that we need to take care of is we need to remeasure the loan capital. Talk about the loan capital amount, right? And then someone's already said for me now. Let me ask. Um, yeah, so, so I mean, there's no use asking the question now. So I'll just tell you. So, so someone's already said it in the chat. We're moving that loan balance from four rand to 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 uh, four rand seventy six. So because the loan balance is going to get bigger, it's going to be a loss, right? So that's the first thing that we're going to do, right? So we're going to move the loan balance. Now let's just park that for now there. Um, we'll 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 get back to it just now. The the next thing that we need to do, right, is we need to recognize the interest expense. Now remember, I told you the interest expense is a non-monetary item. Non -mon remember non-monetary items you only measure it on the day it occurs, on the transaction sort of the transaction date, right? So we're going to measure the interest expense on the day it occurs. Right? And remember, because of the nature of interest expense, let's just, just discuss the nature again. The nature is that it accumulates over time. Okay, it it it, it doesn't we, it doesn't drop all at once. It doesn't like it, it's not like uh, at year end all of the interest just appears on day one on, on the last day at least. It all just falls. No, that's not how it works. Interest accumulates day by day month by month, and in certain cases in South Africa, sometimes even hour by hour, right? So, so because of the nature of interest, it does not make sense for us to use a spot rate at a given time, right? So we don't want to use one spot rate at a, at a given time. Instead, what we do is we use this amount down here called the average rate, right? Can everybody see that at the bottom of the at the very bottom of the slide now, it, uh, I'm worried it might be cut off on some people's, if they're using phones, um, uh, if you're using a phone, then I think maybe what you could do is um, close the chat, uh, maybe, and then try to scroll, right? So if, you, if you've got a very small device. So we've got the average rate that we need to use for the interest expense, right? So now, if, if we um, raise the interest expense at the average, right, and remember the interest expense, non-monetary item, it's going to go to our income uh, statement, our profit and loss statement, and it's going to remain at average because it's non-monetary, right? We, that's okay, right? But now the problem is we are paying the interest in arrears. That means we, we accumulating it. We're not paying it now, right? And that accumulation means that we've got an extra creditor on our books, right? So we've do we don't only owe the bank the, the loan capital, we now owe the bank an interest amount, right? So we've got this new creditor. So that new creditor is a monetary item, right? And we call that new creditor accrued interest. And therefore, we need to remeasure that, that new creditor, which means we're going to have to take him from, um, oh, I've accidentally scribbled on top of the, the amount, but um, let me just erase that. We, we're going to have to take this new creditor, right, from, um, we're going to have to take him from the 4 rand 38, right, to the year end rate of 4 rand 76, okay? 
from 438 to 476. So before anyone answers in the chat, let me ask my question. On the, on the new creditor, on the accrued interest, is there going to be a loss or a gain? Is there going to be a loss or a gain on the on the cred on the new creditor, which which we call accrued interest, right, or interest payable? Is there going to be a loss in the gain? So uh, or, or gain? We're moving from four and thirty-eight, right, which is what we first recognized it at, and we're going to move to four and seventy-six, right. So we're going to have, because again, it's a creditor and it's getting bigger. So it's going to be a loss. All right, so let's try and pass those journal entries for the interest first, and then we'll get, we'll pass the journal entry for the loan just now. All right, so let's pass the journal entries for the interest. So this is what's happened. So they've taken, remember I told you, because it's for, an, they gave us a per annum rate, we have to prorate it. They've taken the $60,000, um, dollars, uh, Singaporean dollars, and they've multiplied it by 10%, which is the rate that we got, right? And then they counted how many months of interest should we have accumulated? June? No, not June. July, because it's from 30th of June. So July, August, September. So three months. So that's why they've said uh, three over 12. So they're prorating it for part of the year. Right? which means we're going to get a total interest amount of 1,500 $1, Singaporean dollars. Right? Now look what they do. They measure that at the average, right? and they debit the interest because the interest is increasing. It's an expense, so it increases on the debit side. They credit the, the, the additional creditor, which is our what we called interest accrued or accrued interest or interest payable. Um, so they, they, they credit that one because it's increasing. And so, so that means that the um, interest expense is now recorded at the right amount, right? So we're happy with the interest expense. It is the right amount. But the accrued interest is not at the right amount. So we're passing another journal entry, right, to record the interest, uh, the accrued interest at the correct amount, which is spot rate at the end of the year. So that's what they're doing here, which is where they're taking the 1500 Singaporean dollars, moving it from the average rate to the spot at the end of the year, spot rate at the end of the year, and that's creating a loss, as people said in the chat. Right? So that's creating a loss. So they're debiting the loss, and they're crediting the um, accrued interest because it's getting bigger. Okay. So, so far, what we spoke about was the interest, um, not, and we also spoke about the loan at the beginning, right? You guys would remember that. Now let's talk about the FEC. Right. So the FEC again is a contract that we get into with the with the bank, and we say to the bank, "Bank, we want to buy um, fifteen thousand Singaporean dollars on the thirtieth or thirty-first of uh, December." So the bank says, "Okay, cool. We'll give you um, th those uh, fifteen thousand. Did I say thirty thousand? I meant fifteen thousand Singaporean dollars." We'll give you that on the 31st of December. However, we're going to charge you a rate of uh, 4 and 17. Okay? So we say, okay, great, great, great. We'll, we'll, we'll sign on the contract, right? And then the time now moves on. So we signed on the contract on the 1st of September. But at the end of, the, of September, when we went to the bank and we said, bank, if we were to again get into an FEC, right? For 15,000 Singaporean dollars, uh, and it must expire on the 31st of December. What rate would you give us today, right? And now this is the 30th of September, so it's a month later. And they said, okay, if you want to get into that, we're going to give you a rate of 4 and 35, right? So what's happened here is we've locked in at a rate of 4 and 17, right? We've locked in at that rate. We've signed on that rate. But the fair value of that, uh, um, of, of, of that contract, the fair value of the product of that contract, so the product means the, the 15,000 Singaporean dollars, the fair value of that has now increased to 4 and 35, right? 
So it's moved from 4 and 17 to 4 and 35. So we have in fact benefited by signing the contract early, earlier on in the year. We benefited. So because of that, we need to recognize a Forex gain on the FEC, right? And remember, the gain is going to increase on the credit side. So we're going to credit the gain. And then we're going to debit this thing called an FEC asset. And all an FEC asset is, it's just recording whether this contract that we got with the bank is, is, an, is, is a good thing or a bad thing for us. It's whether this contract that we got with the bank is an asset or liability for us. That's all the FEC asset, uh, uh, that FEC account is recording, right? So, so, so we're just keeping a track of whether it's good or bad for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to debit the FEC, right? And remember how I told you to structure the account name. I want you to say FEC asset slash liability, right? And then you're going to get full marks. If you say FEC asset only, right? Then I expect you to keep a track of whether it's an asset or liability. And when it switches, if it switches over in your question, if it switches over from an asset and becomes a liability, then I expect you to record it in a different account. Right? But if you don't, if you don't want to do all of that um, uh, tracking, right, then just say FEC asset slash liability. Anyway, um, so 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 we're going to debit that FEC um, that FEC um, asset, right? So let's now record the movement of the loan. So we're going to record the the fair value of the loan, the change of the loan, and then we're also going to record the FEC. Right, so if you have a look here, so remember we dealt with the interest. This is not, I'm not talking about the interest in this slide. I'm talking about the capital portion. The capital portion we took out on um, on the, uh, uh, what was it, 30th of, of June. We took out the capital portion on the 30th of June. Sorry, I've just, something has not gone right with my laptop. Um, we took out the capital portion on the 30th of June, and we took it out at four and um, um, uh, and and we and we recorded it. And remember, we passed that journal entry for 240,000 uh, rand, right? And we we did that by you by by saying that it was four and uh, the exchange rate was four and, right? So now, what we need to do is we need to try and move it. From four rand, we want to try and record it at seventy. Um, uh, sorry, four rand seventy six is what we want to try and record the the, the sixty thousand at, right? So we're moving the sixty thousand from four rand to four rand seventy six, and therefore that's what people were saying in the chat. We're going to have a loss, right? So here you guys can see the loss, right? We've got the loss there. For some reason, my laptop is not allowing me to write on this screen. Anyway, we've got the loss of um, forex loss of forty-five thousand six hundred. And how did we get that amount? We took the difference between the two rates, which is seventy-six cents, multiplied by the sixty thousand Singaporean um, dollars, and so we recorded the loss and we increased the liability. We increased the loan. Right, because the loan is now getting bigger. Okay, and then, like we discussed, we're only raising the FEC for fifteen thousand Singaporean dollars, and we're moving it from seventeen to from four and seventeen to four and thirty-five. Okay. So that's the, those are the journal entries that we need to pass for this for these transactions. Okay, guys. So it seems as if we finished early, um, which is a strange situation for me, because generally I, I I talk long enough so that we don't finish early, but but we have. So if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Um, and if you don't, then all the best. Uh, please have a look at the consultation timetable that I've put up on ClickUp. So when you click.